He's over there. He's about to speak. Uh, you see his son, Rand Paul, standing uh, right behind him. Uh, let, let's see if we can hear what Ron Paul, the congressman, is about to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I think you might recognize my wife. She, her, her picture is on that cookbook. Anybody see that cookbook? Who's there? Okay. Well, well, thank you very much. What, what a delightful crowd. And, you know, sometimes I say, boy, that was a good speech. I said, no, that was a good crowd. <laughs> that, that, that makes all the difference in the world. You know, uh, we, we talk about, and A.J. mentioned, uh, you know, one of three tickets out, which is obviously uh, true, and, and one uh, of two that can actually run a national campaign and raise the money. But there's nobody else that have people like you working hard and enthusiastic and believe in something. That is all the difference in the world. And before I continue with any more comments, I do want to bring uh, at least step forward uh, three, three of our chairmen. Uh, you met already, A.J. Stryker and, uh, and, and, and David Fisher would step forward, as well as Drew Ivers, who's been the chairman. And they are on the Central Committee, and they have led the charge all throughout Iowa. But all I can think about in, in tough campaigns and all the hard work is the work you people do. It is unbelievable, the energy you have and the effort that you have made. But what makes me feel good about it is you're doing it because you believe in something. That is what's worthwhile. But you, but you also also know that there's two good things. Some people say, well, you guys just do that because you believe in something and want to promote a cause. Certainly, but how's the best way to promote a cause? That is win elections. That's the way you promote it. <laughs> now, the enthusiasm has been unbelievable. It's fantastic. It's national. Thousands of people now have been involved, uh, not only in Iowa, but around the country, and they're ready and raring to go. But we have to look at the wonderful changes that have occurred in our country in a positive way. The country has suffered a lot in a negative way. The economy's in, in trouble. Our civil liberties are being trashed. Our foreign policy has been a mess and drains us, uh, both economically and our, and our military forces. But at the same time, people are coming together, and we had the task, which where we are very successful, is reintroducing some ideas the Republicans needed for a long time, and that is... The, that is the conviction that freedom is popular. <laughs> But once again, we have had a fantastic uh, showing for this cause and challenging people, not the status quo that we have been putting up with for decades after decade, but challenge them and say, and you know, let's challenge them. Let's go back to this real old fashioned idea, this very dangerous idea. Let's obey the Constitution. And to. Too often, those who preach limited government and small government, they forget that invasion of your privacy is big government, and we have to emphasize protecting your personal rights and your economic rights are what the government's supposed to do. They're not supposed to run our lives or spend our money. And also, along those lines, what we have introduced with so much enthusiasm, I hear it so often from so many volunteers. The other day, somebody came up to me, and uh, he was refreshing my memory because he knew I knew the statement because I've said it. Back in the old days, in the early 70s, uh, Nixon said, we're all Keynesians now, which meant that uh, even the Republicans they accepted liberal economics. He says, I'm waiting for the day when we can say we're all Austrians now. <laughs> 
But the biggest change, I think, in intellectual and political changes that we have brought about is the emphasis on a very important matter, making sure we get to the bottom of the ultimate bailouters, and that is our Federal Reserve System. We need reforms there, and we need a new monetary system, and, uh, and obey the Constitution. This is, uh, this is something that we've made great progress. So the first and initial important step that we've worked so hard, and it's on the table. Today, there was a national poll came out, and they were talking about how many people supported the gold standard. How long has it been since they've taken a national poll on the gold standard? <laughs> and guess what? The, the majority of the American people believe we should have a gold standard, not a paper standard. <laughs> But also, also the great strides that we have made has been really on the foreign policy. The fact that we can once again talk in a Republican circles and make it credible, talking about what Eisenhower said, to beware of the military-industrial complex, talk about the old days when Robert Taft, Mr. Republican, said that we shouldn't be engaged in these entangling alliances. He believed what the founders taught us. He didn't even want to be in NATO. We certainly don't need NATO and the UN to tell us when to go to war. But we have, uh, we have seen a great difference. The majority of the American people are behind us on this whole war effort. They're tired of the war, cost too much, too much money, too many people get killed, too many people get injured, too many people get sick. And the majority, maybe 70 or 80 percent of the American people now are saying, it's time to get out of Afghanistan. <laughs> So those are the issues. Those are the issues that we have brought front and center. They're out there. They're not going to go away. And we have, and we have tremendous opportunity to continue this momentum. It won't be long that there's going to be an election up in New Hampshire. And believe me, this momentum is going to continue. And this movement is going to continue. And we are going to keep scoring, just as we have tonight. So, <laughs> so tonight we have come out of an uh, out of an election that were essentially three winners, three top uh, vote getters, and we will go on. We will raise the money. I have no doubt about the volunteers. <laughs> They're going to be there. A lot of you have said, and they th you thank me, and you compliment me, and thank me, thank me for helping you along. But let me tell you, you helped me along. You helped my family along. All our work, our supporters. Because without your enthusiasm, we, we can't do it. And this is where I feel most obligated. You know, we want to do the job, present the case. And if anything isn't perfect, I worry not about myself. I worry about you and making sure that you're satisfied. I think there's nothing to be ashamed of, everything to be satisfied, and be ready and raring to move on, on to the next stop, which is New Hampshire. another speaker, a special guest tonight. He's been with us this evening. Matter of fact, he's been with us in our campaign for quite a few years. And you may have met him because he's been around here this evening. But I'd like him to come out and, and say a few words. He's been serving in the military for 10 years, and he's been overseas a lot. A lot of it was in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he was on TV tonight, and he didn't quite get to finish his statement. So I've asked him if he would get come out and make his comments about why he supports our foreign policy, why he is fighting for the Constitution, and what he thinks we should do. But I would like to invite out now Jesse Thorson to come out and say a few words to you. Thank you. <laughs>
If there's any man out there that's had a vision for this country, it is definitely him. His foreign policy is by far, hands down, better than any candidates out there. And I'm sure you all know that. We don't need to be picking fights overseas, and I think everybody else knows that, too. I, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted right now. This is an incredible moment for me. I can't believe it. It's like meeting a rock star. But you know what? We're going to go to New Hampshire. We're all going to get involved. We're going to keep getting online. We're going to keep talking to people. And we are going to make sure this man is the next president of the United States. Thank you much, very much. That is a powerful message. And once again, we all know where the active military people send their money when they're campaigning. They send it to our campaign for liberty, our campaign for the Constitution, our campaign for liberty of government, our campaign for personal liberty and privacy, and a wise foreign policy. The most important thing, the most important thing we have to remember is uh, we want to have influence in the world. That's very important. We want to be active in the world. We want to talk to people and work to pe people, trade with people, and be friends with people. But um, what we need to realize is our ways, you know, there's people who say that uh, we are an exceptional nation, and we certainly are and have been, but we're slipping. But this idea that our exceptionalism out of desperation say that we are so exceptional, what we must do is prove it to the world. We have to f send our troops around the world and force it down their throats. If they don't do it, we'll, you know, invade them and occupy them and force election on them. I'll tell you the best way to spread our message, and that is do our job at home. Preserve our liberties at home. Provide the free market. Have a sound currency. Balance the budget. Set an example and get them, the rest of the world, to emulate us. That is the road to peace and prosperity. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so Ron Paul, you hear him speaking to his supporters there in Iowa. He has come in third, but not very far behind the top two, Rick Santorum and Mitt Romney. Let's take a look at how close this race is right now, and we'll put the numbers. Newt Gingrich, by the way, is getting ready to speak over at Newt Gingrich headquarters in Iowa.